So um, you're gonna learn. You're gonna learn this technique through the workbook, and uh, when I come in uh, in a few weeks, we're gonna start practicing. Okay. And you're gonna start practicing on your own. So just follow through the workbook and follow through the syllabus, and um, you'll uh, you'll 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 be good. Okay. All right. Um, any questions so far? Okay. And we'll we'll deal with we'll talk a little bit about writing sample later in the course. And that's it about the techniques I teach. Okay. And uh, uh, any questions about anything I've talked about so far? Okay. Uh, so last thing I do, and I do this for every course I teach, okay, is I want to show you, and I did it for Derek's course, okay, when he was a student of mine last year. Um, I want to prove, I want to show you guys that this stuff works, okay. I'm one of the few people that can show you that their MCAT system works. I can, so I'm going to show it to you, okay. Um, so we picked out three random passages, and um, everyone have the three passages in front of you, okay. So I have the passages right here, um, unmarked. Now, the um, periodic tables, your physical sciences, and your verbal, and then bio. I picked a bio from, from each one. OK, so there's so the first one. So we have a physical science right here? Uh, uh, we have yeah, passage. it leads off chemical bonds, passage one. OK. So, oh, OK. Well, where's the? Oh, the verbal is Pat. Okay, I got it. The Charles oh, Darwin one, right? Yeah, Charles okay, Darwin. Okay. Uh, so let's let's do it just like the order of an MCAT. So you, your first section is physical science. Okay. So I've got passage one. Okay. Hold on one second. Okay. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm basically going to I'm going to go through this passage just like I would do it on my own, okay? Except I'm going to have to every fundamental. You know, I'm going to look for the fundamentals, think back to those fundamentals in my in my head, of course, and then I'm going to. But instead of doing it in my head, I'm actually going to say it out loud, okay? So it's going to take a little bit longer to do it because I'm saying it out loud, and I'm going to write down anything I write down on my scrap piece of paper. I'm going to write down on this on this board to show you. Okay, so the same, st this is just my piece of paper for the MCAT, okay? All right, um, everyone have it in front of you? Okay, and I'll just, this is exactly how I do it, okay? Chemical bonds are commonly classified as ionic or covalent. Okay, there's a lot of, uh, a lot of fundamental concepts there, right? Uh, covalent bond is a sharing of electrons, okay, between two atoms. Um, now, when an electrons, electrons, these are the valence electrons which I discussed earlier. If two atoms are sharing the two electrons, that typically means that they have similar electronegativities. Okay. Now we talked about this a little earlier in class. Electronegativity is the attraction a nucleus has for valence electrons, which is really the same thing as effective nuclear charge. Okay. And that's something I'm going to teach you. We're going to teach you in this class. Okay. So if two atoms have very different electronegativities, okay, that means that one atom has a lot of attraction for those two shared electrons. So it's more than the other atom, which has a less electronegativity. So the atom with the more electronegativity is going to pull on those negatively charged electrons. Because remember, I said the effective nuclear charge is that positive core of the, of the nucleus, right? So that positive nucleus is going to pull on those electrons. So the electrons are going to be closer to the atom with more electronegativity. Okay, that would be something called a polar covalent bond. Okay, now a covalent bond is just when their electronegativities are really just the same. Okay, because that's equal sharing. No atom, no nucleus is going to pull more on the electrons. Okay, and and this stuff you're going to learn all this stuff in this course. Okay, this, these are fundamentals. Now ionic bond is when the electronegativities are really, really different, okay? One atom is so, has such a higher electronegativity, it's such a high positive charge, an effective nuclear charge, that they basically steal those two electrons away. You guys see the difference, okay? And these are all measured on something called the Pauli scale of electronegativity, okay? Every atom has a, has a electronegative value, according to Pauli, who's a guy who made this scale. So the highest value, I believe, is like four. That's fluorine, okay? That has the most effective nuclear charge, which you'll learn in this class. 
and uh, stuff with low electronegativity is around one, like hydrogen. Okay. So you basically, to, to determine, it's very easy to determine if something is an ionic bond or a covalent, or a polar covalent bond or a covalent bond by just measuring the difference in their poly electronegativity values. Okay, and the value, I believe, is so the difference, if you calculate the difference between the two atoms, if it's above 1.7, that's an ionic bond. Does that make sense? Just means one atom is so much more electronegative, it steals the electrons away. Make sense? Now, if the difference is 1.7 on that scale, it's going to be a polar covalent bond. You're not, it's not steep, one atom's not stealing the electrons, but they're pulling the electrons closer to that atom. Now, the difference is less than 1.7, like around one or less, then you have a covalent bond. Okay, these are all fundamentals you're going to learn in this course. Okay? That's, that's about as in-depth as you can get with that. That, that's, that stuff is all, I think of that stuff very quickly as I read that first sentence. Okay? That's a lot. That's a lot. But I'll probably think I'll probably think all of that in a matter of ten seconds, because it's you, you, when you master this stuff, it's very quick. I can teach this, stuff. and that's why I say you have to teach these fundamentals to master it. Okay. Virtually all compounds that are characterized as ionic solid as ionic are solids at room temperatures. Okay, that's easy for me. Um, ionic compounds meaning you gain an electron and one atom loses electron, so they become charged. Okay. The atom that gains the electron uh, is known as an anion, it's negatively charged. The uh, ion that loses the electron is known as a uh, cation, it's positively charged. If you have a positive charge and a negative charge, that's an electrostatic attraction. They're going to be really attracted to each other. Okay? So that is why a solid, an ionic, will exist as a salt. Anything that has high attraction, and we call that intermolecular attraction, you're going to learn that all throughout this course. The more intermolecular attraction you, you form, the stronger the bonds, and the strongest bonds we know are those of solids. Those atoms are stationary. They're held in place by these strong bonds. Okay? That is why ionic compounds exist as solids in room temperature. Does that make sense? So they have more intermolecular bonding than liquids and gases. Okay? Um, since covalent compounds are solids, wait, some covalent compounds are solids, but many are liquids or gases. Okay, I just talked, kind of, kind of talked about that. So ionic compounds is that formation of ions which have an electrostatic attraction, very strong attraction. Okay, covalent bond, covalent uh, bonds are a sharing of, of, of electrons. It's not going to be as when you put all these covalent molecules in solution. There's not going to be much intermolecular attractions. Okay, if you have polar covalent uh, molecules you will form some intermolecular attraction. So those might form solids. Okay, I'm not going to write it on the board because uh, you know, I'll, I'll discuss all that stuff with you in class. Okay, or, or Derek will, and you'll see it all in the think guides. Okay? So polar covalent bonds can get some intermolecular attractions. They could show up as solids or maybe liquids. Okay? Non-polar, non meaning just covalent bonds, those have the least attraction. Okay, those can only form van der Waal forces or uh, uh, what's the other one called? Vanderwall or what's the other one? Vanderwall. London uh, dispersion. Di London dispersion. Thanks. London dispersion forces, which are very weak intermolecular. Those are just the attraction that carbons, can, carbon and hydrogen, like methane, can form. You know, very very low attraction, okay, or long hydrocarbon chains, very low attraction. Those are more likely to be liquids and gases. Because remember, a gas is just atoms that have very little attraction for each other, right? Everything making sense so far? Okay. And all, all the stuff I'm telling you is just fundamentals. Okay. Uh, the vast okay, next. Uh, the vast majority of covalent compounds are comprised exclusively of non uh, non metallic elements. Okay. Non metallic um, elements. Whereas binary ionic compounds are made up of metal and a non non metal. Okay. So ionic, I always think of a element on the right side of the periodic table, ionic bonded with an element on the very uh, other side of the periodic table. Okay? And you'll learn that that's part of the octet rule. Anything on the very right side of the periodic table wants to gain an electron. Anything on the very left side, your left side, wants to lose an electron. That's why they form ionic bonds. And they have very big differences in electronegativity, okay, which you'll, you'll learn in this class. Okay. <coughs> so the covalent compounds are the two compounds with very low difference in electronegativity. So they could be some, they could each be somewhere in the middle of the periodic table. Okay. Now, the aqueous solutions of ionic compounds conduct electricity, whereas those of covalent compounds do not. Okay, that's something else you're going to learn. Uh, ionic compounds.